Okay, so we're going to go over the instruments that we commonly use in the orthodontic clinic. Um, we'll just go through them one by one and I'll kind of explain what each of them are and what their name is. So first we have the interoral mirror or mouth mirror. Some people call it a mouth mirror. This is just used for, you can use it to retract people's cheeks like this, or you can use it to shine light on the back side of the teeth if you're working with a handpiece or you can use it to look at the back side of the teeth or the retainer. So it's just kind of the mirror that you can use generally inside the mouth. This is called an explorer. Uh, this end is called an explorer. So it's like a spike. You use this to take off the colors or the O-ties from um, a patient's braces. It's like a cylinder that's sharp. Um, whereas this one right here is called, whoop, this one right here is called a scalar. So it's also sharp, but instead of being a cylinder, it's like a triangle. So it has these sharp edges. Normally this is used by hygienists and dentists to clean tartar off of people's teeth. Um, but some uh, assistants like to use it to remove the O-ties from brackets. The other end of these, so here's your explorer end. This end, you can see it's got sort of a little forked tongue, like a little snake's tongue. Um, this is called a ligature director. So you use this to push an arch wire into place or when you've cut a ligature wire, um, you want to tuck it under the, under the arch wire, you can use it to do that. So it's called a ligature director. The other side of the scaler, so there's a scaler end, the other side of this is called a pusher. So this is meant for pushing bands onto the teeth or contouring bands into the side of the teeth so that it matches the contour of the tooth and that's called a pusher. This is called an open mathau. So it's a mathau plier. It has this ratcheting end that ratchets shut. So when you click it, it locks closed. So you can grab single ties or chain and it will lock on there. So now you can just use it and it grabs a hold of them and doesn't let go. And then to release it, you just continue to squeeze and this goes all the way down until it goes past and then it opens. This is called an open mathau because you can see right here at the end, the jaws only touch at the end, and here in the middle is open. So it's meant for really pinching things like that, as opposed to this one, which is called a closed mathau. So the closed mathau, it touches all the way from front to back. I prefer to use these when I'm working with chain because these will tend to pinch it and when you go to pull, it can sometimes cut it or tear it. Whereas this one is less likely to do that because it's not such a pressurized like pinch in one little spot. It kind of spreads the load over more area. So this is a closed mathau and it works just the same as the open mathau as far as the ratcheting action. This is called a distal end cutter. So you can see it's got these jaws right here, this is a flat side and this is a cutting side like a chisel. And so those meet together and they cut uh, arch wire, they cut wire. And then this little round thing right here, it fits up against there and that will hold on to the cut end of the wire so it doesn't fly off when you cut it. I'll demonstrate. So here's an arch wire. I'm going to get a hold of the end here just to demonstrate. and. When I squeeze, it cuts it, and you'll see that little round thing holds on to that little bit of wire. So when you cut the wire in the mouth, you just keep, keep a hold of it nice and tight, and then you come here and you can let go, and, but that little bit of wire will fall off without it shooting into the patient's mouth. So it's called a distal end cutter. It's for cutting the distal end of the wire. This is called a ligature cutter. So it's like a a wire cutter, but just much more expensive. Um, it just meets with a flush cutting blades right here. This is for cutting like ligature tie um, and skinny wires like that. Uh, you can cut zinc string with it. You can cut chain with it. You don't want to cut arch wires with this because the blades are more delicate and it will over time will wear these down. For cutting arch wires, you'll use a distal end cutter, but this is for cutting anything else that's lighter weight than an arch wire. This is called a Weingart plier. So these are like your, this is your basic utility plier. So this is for use of um, putting arch wires in the mouth or taking arch wires out of the mouth. And they come in several different shapes and orientations. 
but they're all called wine guard player if they are meant just as a multi-purpose kind of grabbing player and you can see they just touch here and it's open here now for holding these you can hold them however you want and this goes for all of the instruments but you want to be able to open and close it with one hand so this is how i hold it um, this works well for me some people do this some people do that it just however you do it you just want to be able to open and close it with one hand like this because usually you're holding something with this hand and you're working with the player with this hand so this is called a band removing plier it has a plastic end right here that sits on top of the tooth and then this jawed end goes under the edge of the band and as you pull it will slide the band off the tooth and this goes in in the middle of the band so if it's like that um, this goes on top of the tooth and the band is like this and that edge catches it the bottom edge and lifts it off the tooth so this is called a band removing plier this is called a open cotton plier so this is for use for taking cotton rolls in and out of the mouth um, uh, we'll use it to hold retainer wires when we're placing retainer wires, an open cotton plier. It's different than this one, which is called a loaded cotton plier or a latching or locking cotton plier because this one has this little latch right here. So to open this, you just kind of push this up and that will release. And then it's like that, but then when you push it closed, that will latch shut. So we use these to hold um, these little cotton uh, ends and we use that to soak up liquid um, etchant and apply onto the tooth and then when that's used you just unlatch this throw that away clean it and then you grab a new clean one uh, after it's gone through sterilization so open cotton plier loaded or latching cotton plier most of our staff call this a loaded cotton plier this one here this is called a bracket holder. This is used for holding the brackets. When you squeeze it, it opens. When you let go, it closes. And it's for holding brackets uh, for placing on the teeth when we're putting brackets on. It's called a bracket positioner or a bracket holder. This is called a bite stick. So if we're gonna seat bands onto the teeth, um, you use this to, you put the band on the tooth and then you can position this on the edge of the band and then have the patient bite down and that will slide the band onto the tooth and it has this triangular head and you can use that head in different orientations to fit the different parts of the tooth. This is called a bite stick and they come in different colors but they all work the same. This is called a spatula. Um, this is meant for mix or a mixing spatula. Um, this is meant for mixing up uh, different two-part compounds. So like our band cement is a two-part with a liquid and a powder. So you have the liquid and the powder and then you use this to mix them together. And then you scoop it up and use this to place that cement inside the band. So this is a mixing spatula. And some of them have a small head like this and some of them have a longer, wider head. But they're both called mixing spatulas. This is called a bracket removing plier. Its jaws look like that. They don't quite touch, and you use this to um, remove brackets. So you get this around the bracket, and you squeeze, and that distorts the bracket, gets it to pop off the tooth. You use these when you want to take the brackets off and not reuse them, because it distorts the bracket, and you can't reuse them. Like if you're going to reposition the bracket, you'd use something else. But this is just for removing them and throwing them away. Uh, this is called a bracket removing player. This is uh, also a bracket removing plier, but that's specific for removing symmetry brackets. So those are the symmetry brand porcelain brackets. Um, this grabs onto the tie wings of the bracket, and then when you squeeze, this little arm right here puts outward pressure on the bracket, and it pops the bracket off the tooth in this direction. So this is a symmetry bracket removing plier. This is uh, a clarity bracket removing plier. So this is for use for removing clarity brand um, clear brackets. Uh, you use it similarly, but you get a hold of the bracket like this and squeeze and it breaks them and is supposed to pop them loose. 
Um, so that's for clarity bracket removal. This is called a hammerhead plier. So this is a kind of a specialty plier for putting bends in small nitai wires or nickel titanium wires. The way this works, you can see there's kind of a C-shaped end here, and then this fits into that C, and it will bend a nickel titanium wire past 90 degrees and it leaves a bend in place. So this is for if you want to put a bend in the wire distal to a six, you would reach back there with this, you'd get that on there, and then it puts a bend in the wire just like that. And you want to use this so that it bends the wire toward the tooth so that it's not going to poke anything or, or get in it, uh, poke the gums or irritate. So it has two sides, so it looks kind of like a hammerhead shark is why it's called a hammerhead plier. And it bends the wire in the same shape as that C. So if you want to bend the wire facing that way, you'd use this end. If you want to bend the wire facing that way, you would use this end because the bend would end up looking like that C. Just like that. Hammerhead player. Uh, this is called a bird beak plier. It's, this is a really long bird beak. They have shorter bird beaks, but the way you know it's a bird beak is one side is sort of a square pyramid and the other side is a cone. So that's what a bird beak plier looks like. This is for putting bends in a metal arch wire. So the bird beak has a cone and a square pyramid. This is called a three prong plier because it has three prongs, one on one side and two on the other. This is also for putting bends in wire. When you squeeze a wire like this, it will put a little bend in it and I'll demonstrate here. So I grab this and I can put a little bend in it just like that because the one grabs it on one side and the two grab it on the other and it just puts a V bend in a wire. So this is a three prong. We'll use these when we are shaping a retainer wire when we're going to place a fixed retainer. You'll use a three prong. This is an arch forming plier. So you, you notice it's an arch forming plier because once it looks like a smiley face. This plier is always happy to see you. So one side is like a convex shape and one is a concave shape and they fit together like that. And what this is for is for shaping arch wires or shaping lingual arch wires. When we place a lingual arch, we'll use this to contour the wire. So you can see if I were gonna use this on here, it would place kind of a gentle, kind of rounded bend in the wire. And that's what you can use it, if you use it gently, to kind of put a gentle curve in the wire like that arch forming plier. And lastly, these are called um, torquing pliers or a torquing pair. These work together to put torque for just one bracket. So the way these work is you get a hold of the arch wire with one like this and then you slide this other plier in between there like that and now you've got a hold of it and then you can put a bend in the wire like this and that way it doesn't bend the wire here, it doesn't bend the wire here, it just puts a torquing bend here. Torquing is where you kind of upright the tooth or flare the tooth like this. So when you're done, this might be hard to see on the video, but right there where we put that bend in, there's gonna be a little torque right there where we put it in, just in that one spot for that one bracket. So that's called a torquing pair.